we've seen the proposal of, of course, Punguza Mizigo, maybe a Kuro called Star Alliance, and of course they incorporate hugely how they would want to see devolution work. But like these caller sort of things, I know it's you, you're going to merge the constituents, you're going to sort of reduce the number of constituents that we have. So how best can devolution work in such an environment, knowing mm. very well that even with the members of parliament that we have today, you know, at that constituency level, we've not been successfully be able to sort of get to the people. And I think devolution is all about getting to the people. So when you reduce the number, then there's that feeling that maybe we'll not effectively get to the people. So according to him, this is a way of talking devolution, uh, which is something that's supposed, that is not supposed to be. I hope you have gone through the proposal of a court. Well, the 16 points here. that uh, yeah, specifically that we the alliance of raised, yeah. which uh, uh, some make sense, some do not. Actually, the mm -hmm. majority of them do not. Mm -hmm. Boss Chile says that we should add us, uh, the numbers of actually. Well, uh, people look at this relatively. Yeah. And uh, that caller well, uh, might be right, because mm -hmm. uh, as we eulogize, Kwene Koth may he rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, he's one of the MP who well. utilized uh, the CDF mm -hmm. exceptionally. Mm -hmm. So it's all boils back, back to leadership. Right. And uh, <coughs> two wrongs don't make a right. Mm -hmm. So if we have wrong leaders, you cannot, even if you give, change them, give them what constitution, uh, they will never implement it. Right. This one is hardly implemented. And if you look at his clauses, one, it has one, some of the best clauses. Mm. But again, <coughs> what challenge uh, is Kenyan having with the constitution? Because mm. uh, Kenya is having uh, what, what uh, uh, in the legal world we could call constitutionalism. Right. And for, why are we having the issue with constitutionalism? Uh, there's, I think it's in Psalms which says uh, when the foundation is lacking mm. or shaky, what shall they just do? Or if you're on a shaky foundation, <laughs> you can't build, it'll collapse. Right. And <clears throat> as Justice and Freedom Party, we categorically stated out that we needed to begin from the right constitutional model, mm. which is relevant to this geographical location, that which invoke constitutionalism. Mm -hmm. But if you impose that which is repulsive to this geographical location, however much or however beautiful or good it is, it will never be ac accepted or adopted by the locals. Mm. There are around five models of the constitution worldwide, uh, which actually <coughs> uh, operate and are relevant from in whichever uh, geographical location. Mm. Uh, like a constitution as a frame of government, the one that a US model where the aliens in a foreign, a stranger, a foreign land uh, govern themselves. Right. And it has its own characteristics. We have constitution as a, a political ideal. One of the, uh, the, 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 mo the model that was left by the colonies mm. in their colonies. Mm -hmm. And uh, the political ideals were set, uh, the unattainable ideals. Constance. And uh, the colonies used it as a, and that's what you'll always find in the colonies that were left by the colonialists. Yeah. Uh, most of them, uh, changes are uh, initiated by uh, the constitutional change. Look at them, most mm. of the colonized co uh, countries. And that type of constitution has these char char characteristics. It's always amended, always amended. Mm -hmm. If you study it and look at it, it always have constant amendment. Mm -hmm. And then we have constitution as a, uh, a, a revolutionary manifesto, the one that we have in Cuba, in Cuba yeah. you know, Libya, and these were individuals who went through course and, you know, uh, they uh, revolve and revolutionize their own way, which is very radical. Mm. And, and then we have constitution as a code, the German model, which is very rigid. And uh, you study it and look at it, it's a, a different type, it's just for Germans mm. and fit them very well. And then we also have constitution as a modern adaptation mm -hmm. to ancient tradition. A proposal that Justice and Freedom Party has brought to the table. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this is what is practiced by our colonialist. British does not have a written constitution. Yeah, their constitution is, uh, <coughs> they are, uh, mod they've modernized their ancient, ancient traditions, their customs, their culture, and that's what Israel is also doing. Mm -hmm. And look at those countries. Because if we were to modernize uh, the uh, Wanyores, modernize the Kikuyus, mm -hmm. modernize the, we even have Njurun Chekes with their own constitution. Mm -hmm. Look, visit Luo Council of Elders. And these things work to date. If you go do down there, mm -hmm. They are uh, actually, uh, you know, be, with the advent of colonization, uh, sorry, let me use the white man, mm -hmm. made us to believe and made us to hate, as I said with exception, mm -hmm. uh, that which uh, was ours and actually treated it like backwards. 
and if anything that was not white man's uh -huh. uh, was uh, you know thrown in the dustbin like it's not working. they're so grown and mature enough that yes. even if it's their ancient way of living and they've just transformed it they are able to go by it very exactly well. I mean, because they be own it matured no, to that point exactly because they well this is why we talk about modernization mm -hmm. of our ancient mm -hmm. tradition mm -hmm. our, uh, our cultural practices our religious practices. How easy can we be this, able to own it, Doc, in the event that somebody else came and decided to tell us that this is not good for you and we decided to let go of what we believed in? Uh, at what point can you sort of say that, you know, as a people, we can confidently say that, yes, we can go back to what was ours mm -hmm. and, you know, abide by it and go by it? When that's, those are the elements or of... it's in, because maybe we've learned those a are, lesson? Those, when somebody said not yet to whole, I supported it because you cannot say you are, you are, uh, you are independent yet you're using the instrument of okay. the colonizer. Because colonization is uh, introduction of mm -hmm. a foreign geographic, um, a, 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 a foreign concept to a different geographical uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 I mean, location. Right. And, and, and actual abuse mm -hmm. and do away with that which belongs to that geographical location. In so a way, before is, yeah. we adopt that which is ours, mm -hmm. if we cannot adopt that which is ours, because when you talk about identity crisis, uh, with wrong history, <laughs> it is a, a nylot and bantus. Oh, <laughs> where I, I, people do not really <laughs> understand themselves. <laughs> These are the things that are abusing constitutionalism. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to talk about constitutionalism and own the constitution, mm -hmm. then one, mm -hmm. we must get into the right model. Mm -hmm. And this model that we are having yeah. is a uh, constitution as mm -hmm. a political ideal. Mm -hmm. And one of its characteristics is constant amendments. Mm -hmm. And this one, even before it was passed, Leave alone the initial one, which was been passed, I think, I don't know, eight, uh, six or eight times. Mm -hmm. This one, before it was passed, it already had around, I don't know, uh, 36 amendments mm -hmm. awaiting it. <laughs> now, okay, these well. amend <laughs> amendments have resurrected. And if I was to discuss it based on what they're putting on the table, yeah. also there's a lot of contradiction on it. Because mm. if you look at the, their 16 points, mm. uh, the 16 points which seeks to uh, focus much more on devolved system mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and, and representation. Uh, and uh, it, I don't know why it is blinded mm -hmm. from seeing, because uh, uh, one, this thing need to render solution. And some Kenyans actually don't have a problem with uh, even term limit, how, mm -hmm. how long you take. Mm -hmm. Some Kenyans just have concerns That's with uh, why is this tribe always there and mm -hmm. this tribe not there? Not why are we not represented? Always so and so is always represented. Well, and the question that we see also in uh, some of the African uh, countries, the question of marginalization, they sort of feel like, you know, another tribe is favored to the other. You go to Nigeria today, those calls of cessation and separation by the Biafra people. Right. And in fact, what they are proposing as to what would be their constitution or what would govern and guide them is that they want to go back to the ancient days. They want to go yes. back to the original ways. And right. they sort of feel like, you know, that would be a transformation for Africa. We go back to that and do what we used to do, what our forefathers would do, just strengthen it, of course, as to the current situation. Maybe they would be successful to sort of change Africa, change their very own countries, but that would only be realizable if they get that aspect of, you know, yes, if the cessation calls is awarded to them and they go their separate ways. But, of course, that is not what we would advocate for as it stands no, right no, now. Actually, so there's, there's a, a scripture, of peace. in the scripture in Jeremiah 6.16, really? yeah. when you are at crossroads, Go back to the ancient path <laughs> where you lost the way <laughs> and you shall find rest for your soul. Where did the rain start beating? Exactly. So if ask. you cannot uh -huh. sort out or uh, uh, retrace your path and see where you lost uh -huh. the way, uh -huh. you, will ne you will always be in constant confusion, uh -huh. going in vicious circles uh -huh. without solution. And yeah, we're talking about rendering solution to the next generation <laughs> Doctor, and it needs to be concrete sol solution. Uh -huh. uh, there are a lot of dangers in go, you know, sort of that come along with you looking behind Lord's wife sort of turned into something else and you know you just trying to go back and see what you left and all well, that sometimes it's not as good as it might sound let's just cut that off and cross over to <laughs> Andrew and you talked about devolution being attacked yes. uh, we we'll look at the question of accountability this is the second time that we okay well uh, phase two we would want to say phase two of course after the very first one uh, 2013 all the way up to 2017, then we are in the second phase of devolution, we would want to say that. But we've not been able to realize this. And we would want to give it that benefit of doubt, say it was a pioneer uh, stage. But then again, we cannot always be hiding or burying our heads in the sand. My and say understanding, that it's Linda, is that people in the counties believe devolution is working. Yes. And I've said that, although I may not see some of the progress, but there is progress okay. apparently. Mm -hmm. And I think perception is exceptionally important. Right. Uh, the, uh, we know that people who were not in favor of devolution mm -hmm. are, 
are, are, are going against it now mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. and, and devolution seems to be getting attacked by, de by denying funds, mm -hmm. by, uh, by uh, essentially uh, uh, going after certain governors, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I, but w what does it speak when you see some of the governors, or probably all the governors coming out and senators coming out to say that, yes, we need more and extra funding, but then the likes of Songo coming out to say again, you know, why don't we just work with what we have? What does it speak? Does it then say that whatever they are being awarded right now is probably enough? I think, yes, I think, in fact, what I said earlier, that if, if you look at the Third Way Alliance, the initiatives to reduce the costs mm -hmm. of government, mm -hmm. reduce the wages. That would be perfect. Reduce, and, and that can be done. And it's in, and if, but if you say, if we all laugh and, and nod and wink and say, yes, but the people who have to pass the laws mm -hmm. reducing their compensation are the people who are receiving, receiving that grotesque this, yeah. compensation, and it will never happen. And I would then say that you're right. You, mm -hmm. You're obviously right, except it means that we have institutionalized impunity in right. this country. Mm -hmm. And we will be diverted by people who are, who are denying payments to their civil servants, to their county yeah, workers, yeah. holding them hostage to, in some, uh, some grand constitutional game. Mm -hmm. the, the fact is that, the, uh, that we look at the, the Constitution of 2010, I believe, to be overly prescriptive. Mm -hmm. it, it included, it included things that, that had never been needed to be stated in this country before as far as the KDF must receive National Assembly prior authorization before being deployed domestically on internal security operations. Mm -hmm. Now, that was, that was actually looking at the rest of Africa and other places in the world where the military has gotten overly involved, uh -huh. Burma, places like that, Pakistan. So, and, and the framers the, who, who include uh, Dr. Okot, people who were in the Committee of Experts uh -huh. in 2009, yeah. the people who we delivered this, this constitution uh -huh. to us, you know, they, they put this out for the referendum on the 4th of August, 2010. Uh, that had a lot of, of things that we had never really had to deal with. Yeah. Uh, and yet, something simple like that has never been implemented uh -huh. by the National Assembly. Assembly yeah. It simply is not. There's always an excuse. Well, uh -huh. how do we get 50 people together and one guy? time if, so, if there's a Westgate attack. Right. Well, you know what? If there's a Westgate attack, you should make sure that your National Police Service mm -hmm. is able to handle that sort of attack, mm -hmm. rather than bringing the Kenya Defense, Defense Forces Force. into a domestic insecurity situation. Mm -hmm. so, there are, there, so I think that this whole idea of, of amending the, the Constitution before implementing it fully, before you, we implement the 2010 Constitution fully, in, in letter and in spirit, so we know what's broken. We're trying, we're fixing something that we do not know to be broken. And a lot of the, the, the sort of stuff that makes sense that we, you know, about uh, reducing costs doesn't require changing the Constitution. Right. And I would suggest that uh, from a, a personal point of view, if you look at things involving title deeds, property rights, 65, one of that Constitution, in which I was not allowed to vote, but I was affected by it, I want the, the part of the Constitution that says leasehold certificates should be issued to replace any revoked freehold titles to, be a, to actually be done mm -hmm. nine <laughs> years after the Constitution is, is uh, promulgated. Okay. I don't think that is, uh, is an outlandish request. Do you, Linda? Uh -huh. In essence, when you keep talking about the common Wananchi, uh -huh. I, I think we are all basically yeah, are. the common Wananchi. Including the leaders versus, that No, actually, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't give them that kind of... They, I would say, no, we're all the common Wenanji versus... <laughs> them. <laughs> them. That are not people, the, common, the people yeah. we know. Mm. The people we know. Yeah.